In the previous video, we went through how to download the Iris datasets and uh, I hope you found it useful and been able to actually uh, execute the same task yourself. So in this video, we are going to move into data exploration as well as analysis using the Iris datasets that you've, we have already downloaded earlier. So we Earlier, I used uh, the example of using CMD to start the command prompt. Uh, under Windows, there is the Windows PowerShell that you can also do likewise. It's exactly the same. So we're going to do activate. Um, activate our Iris uh, project. And the only problem with using this screen is that I can't see that it has been activated. So let's try so i need to switch over the cmd so activate iris project and now you can see that the iris project has indeed been activated so we're gonna cd into documents now and iris project and okay we are in our working directory now for this purpose for this project uh, for this video, I'm going to use the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, the Notebook uh, directory is just going to be the current directory that I am in. We will start afresh. And we call this the Iris project. Okay. And we just give ourselves the Iris, Iris project. Okay, and we're going to give it the second heading and we'll call it data exploration and analysis. Okay, some basic things that we do need to do is that we do need to import a couple of uh, typical standard library, uh, NumPy. Uh, we're going to make use of pandas as well. And we are also going to import Seaborn. Uh, NumPy is a numerical Python. Pandas is a data frame. Uh, it's extremely powerful for data analysis. Seaborn is actually a visualization tool. Uh, we're also going to import matplotlib, pyplot as plt as well. That's really, again, a, a visualization tool. We're going to set our um, just Play some settings, codes is equal to true. And finally, we're going to plot our chart, matplotlib inline. Okay, as panda. As it's running, it shows a star. Once it's actually finished running, it shows a two. Let's import our data set. I'm just going to call it data frame. Uh, it's equal to uh, the beauty of using pandas is that you can just read the CSV and iris dot data. That was our file name. Okay, so um, let's see if it's been imported uh, successfully. We're going to read the first five uh, rows of data and first thing that you notice that hey, something is not quite right uh, you notice that the headings uh, is actually in the form of the um, data itself so it looks like we need to re-import this uh, and change it to um, the headings okay so how do you actually import that uh, with no you know with the understanding that the first row is actually, is actually already a data rather than a label. Um, so we're going to use the pandas uh, dot read CSV and just show you how to actually do this. Um, header, um, we need to actually change the header portion. So we're going to change that. First of all, we do need to actually specify dot data. OK, 
Okay, so it requires an input as uh, 0. Okay, minus 1. So it requires a minus 1. So now that it's minus 1, then uh, it's imported correctly. Now the first row is actually the data. Um, okay, so now we're going to store this into our data frame. Uh, PD read. Okay, and, uh, and we're going to just show the header. And notice that it's uh, been imported correctly. Um, that's not really satisfactory, however, because um, quite often we want the actual label uh, to be done correctly. Right now, I need what we, what do we need to do? We need to actually go back to the actual data set itself and have a look at this and look at the so-called labeling. So you can see the first column is the sepal length. Second one is the sepal width, pedal width, pedal. Um, sorry, pedal length and pedal width, and finally the class itself. Um, so this is what we can do: is you can column names. Uh, come over here, and we just can copy and paste this over, and store this as a list. And just repeat for each and every one of those label. Um, fortunately, someone has already done this exercise for us, uh, but I'm doing it the hard way because uh, quite often what you will find is that a big part of your job uh, when you actually before you can even start the um, data analysis itself, you do need to actually um, do this exercise. So, okay. Now, one of the beauty of using the Jupyter Notebook is that you can actually dot tab and scroll through the list of different names, um, different so-called properties that you can actually change to. So let's see if this works. DF head, no. Okay, right. What you can see now is that uh, you can see that our column headings has been labeled properly now you have sepal length sepal width pedal length and pedal width and finally the actual class itself having done all that i'm gonna leave that uh, that's really for to show you that there a little bit of the data cleaning uh, i'm just gonna import the iris data set directly from uh, the seaborn database now, the reason is that, uh, as I mentioned previously, the Iris dataset is very popular. So a lot of these libraries has already uh, pre-input, pre-loaded these uh, data onto their so-called libraries so that you can actually quickly um, make use of uh, and start your analysis. So I'm going to call this uh, Iris and using the Seaborn, which already have the so-called uh, data set uh, imported so I'm gonna load that and view this Seaborn also preloaded it as uh, a pandas data frame as well so as you can see um, what you have is that sepal length sepal width pedal so all of those are exactly the same as the label it's just that the iris dash has been tidy up some of the data has been tidied up so what we want to do now is just do a quick um, uh, analysis counts. Nope, describe. The data sets that we downloaded has 150 entries. So let's look at the one that is actually in the um, Seaborn database. It's also 150. So. Uh, for all intent and purpose, the data sets are exactly the same. There's some slight variation in terms of the sepal width. Um, other than that, the pedal width is also slightly different as well. Um, the beauty of using pandas is that you can actually use these uh, so-called shorthand method described. You can see that the sepal length um, has a mean of 5.8, uh, the standard deviation is of 0.82. Uh, the min is 4.3, uh, 
the max is 7.9 and you can see basically the actual general so-called um, data description this is a really quick data exploration exercise just to actually get a feel of your data notice the range are quite dif different the pedal width are actually quite small so when you're actually performing analysis uh, there may be a need to actually start to normalize this i'll come back and explain normalize what normalization is or min max scaling it uh, in future video but this is just to actually get you uh, appreciation of the fact that the data range scale uh, our size are different so it's going to have an impact on your um, analysis so it's almost always a good practice to actually normalize your data uh, automatically okay so the next thing that we're going to do is just print the actual data set um, the so-called iris uh, info let's see if there's any info that's been stored okay there are some info being stored so there's 150 entries uh, there are multiple columns so the first four that we looked at um, uh, well there's 150 these are float the last one is actually an object and we want to just also have a look at the we already analyzed the four so-called continuous variable, so which is the sepal length width, length width for pedal as well. So we already know what they are. Let's have a look at the um, iris. And we're just going to do a little bit of group by. And uh, based on the so-called species. And, uh, and we look at the actual size itself. Okay, so looking at this, uh, we're grouping... Um, the so-called species type um, and we can see that the actual size of these are 50 each it's actually a pretty uh, so-called even database that allow us to um, conduct our analysis so for now that's pretty much the end of this video before we move on um, I'd like you to try this exercise yourself play around uh, with the Jupyter notebook and explore the iris uh, data. Uh, one thing that you can do is instead of printing just the head itself, the first five, can you print the whole lot, look at all the data itself? Can you actually conduct your own standard deviation calculation? Um, just try this exercise. Uh, I'm going to pause the video and let you actually play around with this. Uh, I really strongly encourage you to play with it. The more you interact with the data sets, the more intuition uh, you will be able to develop uh, and that will actually aid you further down when you try to actually conduct your machine learning or your modeling of the data, trying to find a, a way to represent the real world. That's really the whole intent of the exercise is to get a feel of the data, get a develop intuition and try to model it and also predict uh, going forward. Uh, what we've done so far is just to perform a really quick analysis of our data just to explore get a feel of it what kind of data do we have are we dealing with numerical data are we doing dealing with uh, text are we dealing with uh, strings uh, what are we dealing with so the whole exercise here is to just to get a feel of our data and and and, and always at the back of your mind think of what are you are what are you trying to achieve here so for now, we're going to stop this. In the next video, we're going to do some uh, presentation or data visualization to actually get a, get a much more in-depth view of it. So at least for now, we have some range. Uh, we can see the range of our data. We can see the, the categorical data. What, what are we dealing with? We have three different data uh, categories of flower types. Um, and we're going to move on to uh, a little bit more in terms of the presentation in the next video.